Today we're finally going to get rid of the ugly wheels on my 90LX Mustang and open up to a lot more wheel options by converting the 5 lug. Now there are several different ways to do a 5 lug swap on a Fox body Mustang. Now one way is to use parts from the SN95, use the spindles and conversion that way. Now in my case, I'm looking for the easier way to go, which is to replace just the front rotors. Now with the wheels I'm using, these will work fine, so I don't need the SN95 parts. So we're going to start off with a set of the front rotors, which will be direct replacements for your factory rotors, but in a 5 lug setup. Now for the rear, we have the 5 lug drums, a high quality set of 28 spline axles from Yukon Axles, along with a Ford Performance axle bearing and seal kit. For this installation, with a lift or a jack and jack stands, quarter inch ratchet, eight millimeter socket, three eighth ratchet, half inch socket, 17 millimeter socket, six millimeter socket or Allen key, short extension, crescent wrench, hammer, pry bar, slide hammer, bearing installer, and a small flathead screwdriver. Now, Brennan's going to handle the wrenching. I'm going to walk you through the process to do this. And the first thing we're going to do is remove the caliper and the caliper bracket. Then we can remove the cap here, disassemble the rotor, and remove it. All right, so with the caliper off the bracket, now we're going to remove the dust cover from the center and remove the internal pieces to remove the rotor. Now we're going to remove the cotter pin first, then we can remove the castle nut. Now the castle nut off, you can remove the whole assembly. So with everything out of the way, what we're going to do now is just clean up our factory spindle before we install the new parts. With the spindle cleaned up, now we're going to put some more grease on it. And then we're ready to prep our new parts. So before we install the new rotors, we have to pack the bearings with grease. There's a couple of different ways to do this. The easiest way is this tool right here. You can pick this up at Harbor Freight, most auto parts store. These are maybe 15 bucks, definitely something worthwhile to have. If not, there's an old school way and Brennan's gonna walk through that as well. Now the new bearings include races. Now our rotors already have races installed, so we're gonna use ones that are previously installed. If you do wanna use the new races, you're welcome to. In my opinion, it's much easier to use the ones that are already there. We're going to start with the inner race. Now, if you're doing it the old school way without the tool, basically what you're going to do, put grease in your hand and then slowly work the bearing through. This is a very important part. You want to make sure you do this right and take the time. If you don't have the proper amount of grease on the bearing, you don't get enough grease inside the bearing, it'll definitely wear out in a hurry. Basically what you're doing here is just working the bearing around and just pushing the grease into it. Here's roughly what it looks like when it's done. You want to make sure you have grease all the way around the outside and then actually push up through here as well. Then you know it's ready to be installed. Now we grab the inner bearing for the other side. We're going to show you how to properly pack the bearing using the handy packer. Now this is working. Basically, this is pre-packed in our case with grease in earlier. This is grease down here. And as you push down, grease is forced up the middle and pushed through the bearing. And you can see the grease equally pushed through the bearing. It's ready to install. All right, the bearing's properly greased, we're ready to assemble a rotor. The first thing you can do here, again, more grease. Put some on the races themselves before we install the bearings. All right, the inner bearing installed, now we're gonna install the seal itself. What you can do is put this over the edge here, then carefully tap it into place with a hammer. Small piece of wood's not a bad idea, make sure you hit it evenly. And we want to make sure the race for the front outer bearing is also greased up. Now we can put the rotor up onto the spindle. 
Now make sure it's seated all the way on and now we can install the outer bearing and then the castle nut. All right, you tighten up the castle nut. There is no real torque spec to it. Get it hand tight and then a good quarter turn is as tight as it needs to be. Okay, with the castle nut tight, now we can put the cap on and reinstall the cotter pin. When the cotter pin installed, just make sure you bend it to a point where we can install the cap without any kind of clearance issues. All right, now we can reinstall the dust cap. The next step is going to be reinstall the caliper and the brakes. Before we do so, you want to grab some brake clean and clean off the rotor. I know it's a brand new rotor, but you want to clean it, get all the oils off of it before we reinstall everything. I should mention at this point too, obviously we just installed brand new rotors. Excellent time to also install some brand new brake pads. On the case of our project here, we actually have some brake upgrades planned for the future and our stock pads are not in bad shape, so we're gonna leave them on the car for now. All right, now the caliper can go back on. You may have to compress the piston a little bit to get it on, but a lot of times it'll go right on as well. And before you bolt the caliper back down, you'll want to grease the slide pins on the bolts and then put them back on. All right, and tighten up the pins. And you want to repeat the process on the other side. We can move on to the rears. All right, with the front finish, we're ready to move on to the rear. Now, the rear is a little more involved, because to do this, we have to remove the axles, obviously, from the car. So the first step is going to be get it up in the air. We're going to pop off this rear diff cover, drain the fluid, so we can work on removing the axles. Now, the top bolt loose, but leave it in place. Now, what we're going to do is get a small pry bar or screwdriver so we can crack the cap loose and make sure again you have something underneath it because the oil is going to pour out. Okay, with the dip off and drain, now what we need to do is remove the pin to get to the C-clips to remove the axle. And to do that, what you're going to do is remove this pin here. This is the set pin that basically bolts in and holds this pin in place. So remove this bolt and this pin will actually slide out and we can get to the C-clips. Now before you can actually remove the axles, you do want to remove the drums. Now make sure when your car is up in the air, your e-brake is off. Or you'll never get these things off. Sometimes you'll have to tap them with a hammer and sometimes they'll just kind of come right off. Now with the drums off, it's a great time to check out your brake shoes. If they're worn, this is an excellent time to replace them. In our case, our shoes are actually not in bad shape, but we do have disc brakes planned for the future, so we're going to leave them for now. But what you need to do now is push the axle in. Once you push the axle in, the clip itself will be visible. This is the C-clip. This is actually what holds your axle in place. And sometimes you do got to wiggle the axle a little bit to get the C-clip out. the C-clip out, we can remove the axle. Before we install our new axles, we're going to replace the axle bearings and seals with new parts from Ford Performance. And the first thing we're going to do here is remove the original seal, a small pry bar, carefully, you can remove it, get it out of the way. Now to get the bearing out, it's a little more challenging. You want to get a slide hammer, basically you're going to hook it on the inside and pop it out. Now if you don't have a slide hammer, this is a tool you can rent at pretty much any auto parts store. Okay, now we're going to install our Ford Performance bearings. You're going to put the new bearing up into place and use a proper tool and hammer it in.
Since it's a tool you probably don't have, these are actually very inexpensive at a place like Harbor Freight, or you can always rent them as well. And hammer it in until it bottoms out. Right, with the bearing all the way in now, now we're going to install the seal. Basically the same way, a little bit of grease on the outside of the seal will make this easier to put on. We get it lined up and then carefully tap it into place. And on the seal, you want to get it flush with the outside edge. And then once it's seated properly, you're going to repeat the process on the other side. What we're going to do here is just put a little bit of the gear oil on the bearing before we install the axle, just for a little more protection. Now we're going to install our new axle. Be careful with the new seal. Don't put a lot of weight on it. You want to just put it straight through. All right, so the axle's in. Basically now, the reassembly process is everything backwards. We're going to start by installing the C-clips. We're going to reinstall the pin and then put a little bit of Loctite on the bolt because, trust me, you don't want this bolt to back out to hold the axles in place. With the axle seated now, we can put both drums on. We're ready to reinstall our differential cover. Now, in the case of this car, the factory diff cover was just straight up ugly. Now, while the rest of the car is sort of ugly right now, we have big plans for this project. So while we have it apart, we're going to upgrade this cover from B&M. This is much beefier than the factory cover. It has both a drain and a fill plug on it. It even supports for the main caps. We're going to put some gasket maker on our B&M before we install it. You want to make sure the differential on the car is clean. Get sure all the gaskets off, get the surface nice and clean before you install our original or upgraded cover. We're going to tighten these down in a crisscross pattern and then torque them down to 15 foot pounds. Now, set up the support. What you're going to do is turn these in until they hit the caps. them they're lightly touching. Once they're touching, then you're going to torque them to five foot down. Once they're tightened down, you're going to put just a dab of RTV on each one, then install the supply jam nuts. And then tighten those down again, five foot down. So the last step in the process now is to fill it up with gear oil. Now what we're going to do here, remove the factory fill plug from the front of the differential. We're going to fill it back here. We're going to use that hole, basically put your finger in it, and as soon as you feel fluid, it's full. All right, so once it's full and it comes out the back, we can reinstall the fill plug on the factory differential, and your installation's finished. Well, there's no real performance gain for a 5 lug swap. The main reason to do it is right here, wheel options. You have a ton more options to choose from with a 5 lug wheel. Now, obviously, these are just factory 96 Cobra wheels for now. They look great right on the car and a lot better than the wheels that were on there. As far as the installation goes, figure yourself about four to five hours for the whole install. You'll be back on the road in no time.